chapter 8.1 quick review page 640 again this is section 8.1 in, in chapter 8 and this section has to do with going into conics sections parabola specifically so these are kind of warm-up exercises going in that direction in this case I'm going to do all the odd number problems so I'm, I'm going to take a quick look at number two because uh, number two has an element thrown there can, can throw students off anyway here's exercise one or two find the distance between the given points and we have the points here uh, negative one comma three and two comma five and for this there's a distance formula and we use the form of this formula when we were working with vectors and the distance formula is this I'll put DF for distance formula that you have the square root, I want to give myself, make this really big, give myself a lot of room, you have x sub 2 minus x sub 1 quantity squared plus y sub 2 minus y sub 1 quantity squared. So we just have to label what we have and typically what we do is is put the first one and then you can it can be in either order but here I'm going to call this uh, first coordinate pair x sub 1 y sub 1 and then the second coordinate pair x sub 2 comma y sub 2 okay so we have four numbers represented to to go right in this formula so just just plugging in the formula here and we just bring this out like this and just put uh, x sub 2 well that's going to be 2 minus x sub 1 which is negative 1 and we take that quantity squared plus we have y sub 2 which is 5 minus y sub 1 which is 3 and we square that so this is what we have here now in this case it's really important to have our skills up on our injure arithmetic or else we can be messed up here in our simplifying uh, we have 2 minus negative 1 which is going to be 3 and that's going to be squared plus 5 minus 2 or 5 minus 3 which is 2 squared and so that's going to be a nine, nine plus four, which is square root of point nine four, which equals the square root of thirteen. So the square root of thirteen is our distance. Okay, so we put distance between our two points. Now, typically on these exercises that I put in here with my QR code, um, I go with the odd number problems, but in this instance. I'm going to be uh, taking a quick look and probably just the setup of problem two because this can be a, a complication to have these letters and that's something that confuses students the, the addition of letters but it's just the same format we have x sub 1 comma y sub 1 and this a coordinate becomes x sub 2 comma y sub 2 and so our distance it's going to be just using the same formula and that's going to be uh, x sub 2 which is going to be a minus x sub 1 which is 2 quantity squared plus we have y sub 2 which is b minus negative 3 or which you could say that plus, you could write that as plus 2. But anyway, that's our basic setup. Uh, let's go on to the next odd number problem, which is 3. In exercise 3 and 4 solve for y in terms of x. And so basically in, in uh, so using our conic sections, and particularly 8.1 has to do with parabolas mostly, uh, we need to be able to solve for a certain variable to be able to graph. In this case, we have the equation 2y squared 
equals 8x. And so to solve, we're going to be solving for y. We're going to solve for y in terms of x. We divide both sides of this equation by 2. We have a cancellation, so we have y squared equals 8 divided by 4, 8 divided by 2, which is 4, x. Okay, and now we take the square root of both sides to, to isolate y. We take the square root of both sides of the equation. And so y is equal to um, square root of 4x. Is that true? Well, no, it's not, because in taking the square root, we have a uh, positive and negative value, so we're going to have plus or minus the square root of x. And what we're going to do is take, uh, we could further simplify because do we have a number that's a perfect square in here? Yes. What is the square root? of 4, 2. So we can pull that 2 outside of the radical. So our most simplified version is y equals plus or minus 2 square root of x. This, my friends of pre-calculus, is a sideways opening parabola. And one of these by itself, like we had plus 2 square root of x, would be based on a would be a square root type function, right? 2 square root of x would look something like this. But with the minus, we complete that parabola and go have this bottom half. So this, this, this bottom half would be y equals negative 2 square root of x, and this top half would be y equals 2 square root of x. So that's how we get our sideways opening parabola. Okay, let's go on to uh, problems 5 and 6. Complete the square to rewrite the equation in vertex form. So, uh, basically, I, these are ones that, even though in Algebra 2, a lot of my students, most of my students have been exposed to completing the square, I don't really coldly be able to expect most of my students to be able to do this right off the bat. So let's let's talk about completing the square. Uh, one, what I like to do to complete the square is get the equation in the form, uh, first of all, just x squared in the x squared form. And to do that, what I'm going to do is multiply both sides of this equation. I'm just going to write rewrite the equation here. I'm going to multiply this whole equation by a factor of negative 1. So this ends up being uh, negative y equals x squared minus 2x plus 7. Okay, next, I'm going to get rid of this 7 on the right side of the equation by subtracting it. So having subtracted, we're left with, on the left side, negative y minus 7 is equal to x squared minus 2x. Now the technique, now we have the, the quadratic and linear term on the right side. Uh, this is x, 1x squared. We have something we can work with. What we do is we take this coefficient here of x, which is 2, okay, and we divide that by 2, which equals 1. This number 1 is what we have to add. We always have to add that number in completing the square. We will add it, and I'm going to go ahead and make a little arrow here. We are going to add 1 to this right side to complete the square. And if we add 1 to the right side, what do we have to do? We have to take the same 1 and come back over here to the left side and then also add 1. Okay? So that's 
uh, what's going to happen as a result we are going to have a complete square on the right side and I'm going to go right write that complete square up here which is going to be uh, negative y and we've took that negative 7 and added 1 to it so that's going to end up being negative 6 on the left side and on the right side we have x squared minus 2x plus 1 okay now we're going to complete that square left side I'm just going to bring down negative y minus 6 and we're going to complete that square on the right side and that's going to be x minus 1 quantity squared All right and if you to, to kind of before even doing that we can write this as quantity x minus 1 times quantity x minus 1 you see that if we multiply uh, these back together negative x times x, x squared, negative 1 times x, negative x, negative 1 times x, negative x, and negative 1 times negative 1 equals 1. So we have we have this on the x minus 1 squared. Now we can solve for y to have a completed square, a vertex form. So if we add 6 to both sides of this equation, we have negative y equals quantity x minus 1 squared plus 6. And finally, to solve for y, if we multiply the whole equation by negative 1, we have y equals negative quantity x minus 1 squared minus 6. And so now we have a an equation in vertex form, a function in vertex form that we could easily graph. We you know we could put this thing, we go to the left one, downward opening parabola, and then drop the drop the thing down six uh, below. In fact, the graft, here's what the graft function would look like. Let me get this. Okay, we're going to have x minus 1, that's going to move the parabola to the right. So this is going to be our axis of symmetry at x equals 1. Okay. x equals 1. And then we're having a standard para downward opening parabola. Some blue here. Okay, one. And then this one's going to be about down here. But we have this minus 6. So that's going to bring this parabola down 6 units. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So our vertex is going to be right here at 1, negative 6. And then our parabola is going to be, is going to be like this, opening down. So completing the square helps us to more easily graph a parabola, essentially. Next, let's go to problem number seven. In exercise seven eight, find the vertex and the axis of the graph of f. Describe how the graph of f can be obtained from the graph of g of x equals x squared and graph f. Well, the vertex and vertex form enables us to find the vertex easily. We have uh, the form is going to be x minus h, and h is going to be 1. And so vertex is going to occur at x equals 1, x equals 1, comma, and then we're, the parabola is going up 5 units, so, so 1 comma 5 is our vertex. And then we have our uh, 3 there, so that's our vertex, uh, find the vertex, and the axis, okay? The axis of symmetry is x equals 1. And when we graph the function, if we draw a coordinate plane like this, 
JD, we're going to have at 1, 5, 1, 1, all right, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this will be our vertex up here, upper open parabola, coefficient of 3. So we have, a, we have a, the skinny parabola like this, I'm putting in red. And so uh, and now it's asking really for the verbal description. How can the graph of f be obtained from the graph of f x, x, x squared and graph? Well, first of all, this 3 here, coefficient out front, is, is 1. Let's call it vertically stretch by a factor of 3. That's what that 3 does out front factor of 3. 2. Uh, translate g of x, which is x squared, 1 unit to the right and 5 units up. And if we had a negative coefficient out front here, we could all, we'd also possibly have a reflection and and so forth. Anyway, that's that's what we have to do to obtain this graph or from the graph of g of x equals x squared, the vertical stretch and the translation. Okay, let's get on to problem number. Okay, problem number eight. This is going to be a downward opening parabola with that negative coefficient out front. Exercise 9 and 10, write an equation for the quadratic function whose graph contains the given vertex and point. Uh, sometimes it helps me to make a little sketch, not that that's 100% necessary, but if we have a, uh, a coordinate plane right here, we have the point negative 1, comma 3. So negative 1, that's 1 to the left, and 3 up. So here we have our vertex right here at negative 1, comma 3. Our axis symmetry is at x equals negative 1. And we have the point 0, comma 1. That is part, so the vertex is part of the graph, of course and point 0, 0,1. And by symmetry, at, uh, we're going to have a point on the, vert on the parabola also of negative 2, comma, 1. So our parabola is going to look something like this. Okay. It's gonna, our y-intercept is going to be here at, at 1. But the function I'm going to use <coughs> For this is is this the the vertex form? We're gonna have y equals. We're gonna have a, which is the coefficient of compression or stretching. We don't know yet. We have x, and our vertex is at negative one, so that's gonna be x plus one. Okay, quantity squared, and x plus 1 quantity squared would, would make the parabola right here, but we are moving the thing up by what? Three units. So I'm put plus 3. And so this is our basic form, and all we need to do to figure out our exact equation is put this point. Okay, we're given this point, 0, 1. And we put that point 0, 1, and, and so x is going to be equal to 0, y is going to be equal to 1. So we're going to replace in this equation x and y with, with 0 and 1 respectively. 
So y is 1, so we have 1 is equal to a, which we do not yet know, and we have x, and x is what? 0. See, just replacing in the equation, 0 plus 1, uh, quantity squared, plus 3. And working this out, we have 1 equals a times what is 0 plus 1 squared? That's going to be 1a plus 3. So we have 1 equals a plus 3. And subtract, solving for a, subtracting 3 from both sides of the equation. We have a equals negative 2. Okay, so on our equation, we go back to, we take that negative 2 and put it back into this equation for a. And so our, our equation in, uh, find the equation, it's going to be y equals negative 2 times quantity x plus 1 squared plus 3. So that will be our answer. Again, uh, I, don't expect, I don't expect most of my students to be able to do this right off the bat, but this is a review in some respects from Algebra 2. And good luck. Good luck with the remainder of Chapter 8.1 or Section 8.1. Thanks for viewing. Thanks.